Hello, John from Prisma here, and in this video, we're going to learn how to set up a local MongoDB server on macOS. So what is MongoDB? Mongo is what's referred to as a document or NoSQL database, which is usually slightly more flexible and less structured than a traditional SQL database like MySQL or Postgres. In those environments, data is usually super, super structured and usually defined upfront. So we have tables with different columns. Those columns have different data types. And usually we're defining the relationships between those bits of data so we can pull them all together in our application. Now in a NoSQL database, like MongoDB, we'd usually take those related bits of data and store them together in one big document. This is basically like a big JSON blob. And since JSON's probably how we want to represent our data in our application, it can really make that, that data layer a lot more simple. So let's learn how to get it installed. The first thing we need to install is Homebrew. So this is a package manager for Mac OS. Basically, it's just going to allow us to install our MongoDB server. So let's copy this command and head over to our terminal and paste it. Now this is going to ask for our password, and then it's just going to tell us which bits this is going to install. So I'm just gonna press return to continue. And once that's finished installing, we can just type brew-v to make sure that everything is installed correctly. Uh, the other package that we're going to need is Xcode select. And so we can install this by typing Xcode dash select and then space dash dash install. In my case, you'll see that I already have this installed, so it hasn't actually done anything. So the next thing we want to do is use brew to install MongoDB. So first we have to tell it where to install that package from. So we can say brew tap MongoDB slash brew. Now we can write brew install MongoDB uh, dash community, and then we are going to install the version 4.4. So now that that's finished installing, you'll see there are these two different ways that we can run our MongoDB server. Um, so the first one is by writing mongod dash dash config, and then pointing it to our local configuration. So now that we have that Mongo server running in this window, we can open another terminal window and type the command mongo to connect to that. And now you'll get a whole bunch of text dumped out, but basically if you can see this greater than symbol, uh, it's, it's waiting for a command. And so we have successfully connected to that MongoDB server. And we can confirm that by saying show DBS, and this is going to show us any of the databases that exist in our Mongo service. And so now you'll see if I stop running this command in this window by doing control C, uh, if I try to run show DBS again in this window, I get a big error basically saying that uh, the socket is no longer available. So now we can type exit to quit out of that process. And if we head back over to our server window and type this command, so brew services start mongodb slash brew slash mongodb community, this is gonna run that same command. So it's gonna start our mongodb server, uh, but it's gonna start it in a background process. So now if we connect to, uh, to that server again from this window and we say show dbs, we see those different databases, but now if we close this window and run that command again, you'll see that we're still connected. So it's continuing to run in the background even though the window isn't open. Okay, great. Looks like we are ready to insert some data into our database. So the first thing we need to do is create a new database. So we use the use keyword, and then we're going to call our new database learning-mongo. And now what that does is it creates that database and it also switches our context uh, to being inside that database. So if we type db, and then press enter, you'll see that we have learning-mongo. So we are inside the database that we just created. So now let's create some users. And so we can say db.user, and so this is going to create a new collection for user. And then we can say we want to insert a new value where the name is John, the age is 31, and let's say the nicknames for John are Dijon, and cool guy. And we just need to close our curly bracket there and then close our parentheses. And you'll see that we have inserted one record into our database. Well, was it that easy? Well, let's have a look. We can say db.user.find, and we can just pass this an empty object. And we see that we get back our object um, it's, give, it's automatically given us a unique ID, so that's good. Uh, we have the name John, the age 31, and those nicknames. So now if we wanted to insert multiple users into our user collection, uh, rather than just passing an object like we did last time, we can actually pass an array. 
of objects. And so we could pass uh, one with a name of uh, Mary and one with a name of Bob and an age of 15. And you'll see that we've inserted two records. And so you'll see if we type db.user.find again, we have those three different objects. So we have John, Mary, and Bob. Okay, cool. So we can use db.user.find to get all of our users. But what if we wanted to just find a user with the name Bob? Now we haven't got any records back here and that's because this query is case sensitive. And so when we entered in that data, we entered it with an uppercase B. So uppercase B Bob is different from lowercase B Bob. And now if we run that query, you'll see that we get that object back. Now, what if we wanted to uh, find a user based on one of their nicknames? So remember nicknames was an array of values. Um, but if we just say we want to find uh, any user with the nicknames Dijon, when we run that, we'll get back that object. And so you see, we don't need to pass anything different um, to find one particular value or to find a value in an array. Um, and that's the kind of flexibility that something like MongoDB gives us. Okay, so what if we wanted to update one of our users? Uh, so in this case, we pass two objects. So the first object is who we want to update. So in this case, we want to update Mary and we wanna give Mary a nickname. And so this second object is what we actually want to change. And so here we want to say dollar sign set. And so this is going to allow us to set one of those properties. And we want to set nicknames to be an array. And inside that array, we will say uh, May can be her nickname. Great. So now if we do db.user.find uh, anyone with nicknames of May. we should see that Mary object. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is be able to remove a user. So let's say Bob's time with us has come to an end. So we want to remove uh, any of our users that have the name Bob. And then you'll see here we've removed one record. And if we say db.user.find uh, and pass it an empty object, uh, we have John and we have Mary, but unfortunately we no longer have Bob. So that's how easy it is to get up and running with a MongoDB server. And then to make interacting with your data even easier, Prisma has just released a MongoDB connector. Check out the link in the description to find out more. Also, please leave us a comment if you liked this video or let us know any other content that you think would be useful for you to know around MongoDB. And check us out on Twitter at twitter.com slash Prisma. Thanks for watching.